Hello to everyone and thank you for joining this podcast. Today in our podcast, we will talk about community engagement on environmental decision making. And here is with me uh, the guest Guri Buge. She is a climate coordinator at Viking County, which is in Norway. And the Viking County cooperates with municipalities and support them at energy and climate planning. Uh, Guri uh, Buge has a lot of experience in community engagement and therefore she will today share some insights and her advices. So Guri, uh, welcome uh, to this podcast and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, so let's start with the questions. So first, why is the community engagement important in environmental decision making? For me, this all comes down to the tragedy of commons that those who benefit from using and misusing environmental resources are not the same people who suffer from the consequences. Poor people, people with disabilities, women and children are disproportionately affected by pollution and climate change and loss of natural diversity. And the purpose of a democracy and of municipal planning process is to ensure that the voices of all people are heard not only of the powerful and rich. So community engagement done right will ensure that the local inhabitants are empowered and can really influence their community. Can you please give us maybe a few examples on how to motivate the community to be engaged in environmental decision-making? There are a lot of tips and tricks and ways to increase engagement, but in the basics of it, it all comes down to uh, if you really can see results and find that your voice has been heard. Because why should you spend time if it ends up with nothing? And the same from the municipal side. Why do you want to spend time and resources on engaging the community if you really don't want to make changes based on what they say? So it has to be real engagement and real engagement over time. If you prove to the people that uh, their their work matters, then uh, you will see an increase in engagement. But also, on the other hand, maybe could you explain us what are the main barriers to, uh, to engage community and how to ensure that their engagement is a uh, long-term engagement? And this is, of course, the flip side. If if they uh, t- try to take part once and don't feel that they were listened to, had a bad experience, it's enough with one bad experience. And then the rumors will spread in the uh, community that there's no point in taking part. It's a waste of time. So uh, it's quite vulnerable from the municipality side of it. You only have one time to make a good impression. And you should make that one time matter. But as a municipality, you also have the challenge that your processes take time. And uh, the community will not always understand that you have listened. It's just that the change will come in five years. So you have to try to find some things that you can uh, implement immediately or ways to communicate how uh, the input is being processed so that the community understands that you are taking them seriously. From your experience, as I mentioned, you had a lot of experience working with municipality, a lot of experience with uh, community engagement on environmental topics. Uh, What is the best format to involve community in decision-making? The best format depends on who you are engaging with. Uh, Engaging a business leader and a child in kindergarten age in the same format. Uh, It can work, it can be quite fun, uh, uh, but usually not. You have to meet people where they are uh, on their arenas. That takes more time. Uh, It is more work, but that is where you get the results if you really adapt to the community. And you also need to adapt your language. As public servants, we use a language uh, that is quite difficult to understand for the inhabitants. And it's our job to change. We can't train uh, all inhabitants to understand the public servant language. 
So meet people where they are in space, in time, and in language. That is a great piece of advice. And uh, for the final of this uh, podcast, could you please give us one concrete example from your work on how you implemented community engagement and maybe what were the benefits and also did it feature affected the implementation of the environmental decision? There are many examples uh, from the small to the large, but one of the most interesting ones that I've been working on lately is uh, a small community, a part of a city uh, where there have, are socioeconomic challenges. This is the one place in Norway with the lowest participation rate in elections. Uh, so they have not taken part in municipal uh, processes. So what was done there was to establish an arena, establish a way for them to engage with each other, to have dialogue within the community, and then to use that arena to uh, engage them in the public uh, processes. The municipality had a, a geographical plan that they were making, um, and this was discussed in this community. And they had one, they had, they gave feedback that they had no parks, no green structures, no very few places for the children to play. And the municipality had a quite large area uh, that they were using for storage, storing machinery and basically a lot of garbage. This was, of course, not nice and it was dangerous for the children. So, uh, the, they gave feedback that they would like to use this area as a park. And municipal planning processes take years. So even though this was taken into the process and uh, it was favorably uh, accepted by the politicians, uh, to ensure that the people were really heard, the municipality uh, agreed to make a test they designated it as a test area. So the municipality got access to the area immediately. So they have made a communal garden. They made a, a park uh, with fences where you can uh, have dog exercises. And they are working to uh, get more uh, for, uh, places for the children to play. So they could see the effect of what they were suggesting right away. Uh, and this has caused this municip this community to uh, feel that engagement works. So now, uh, just a few weeks ago, I saw in the newspaper that they have been engaging in uh, an industrial development, protesting uh, the effects of noise, etc. And they have been heard because now they know how to engage, and they know that uh, it works. Great, that is really an uh, excellent example. Uh, once again, Guri, thank you very much for being part of this podcast and sharing with us your experience and your great advice.